Do you want to experience the thrill of a Packers game at Lambeau Field? If so, be sure to get your game tickets from the longtime trusted source in Wisconsin, Ticket King. Visit their locations in Milwaukee and Green Bay or just go to their website, theticketking.com. Again, that's theticketking.com. And now, for fans of the 13-time NFL champion Green Bay Packers, this is Cheesehead TV Live. Cheetahs don't stretch and neither do we. I think you're an idiot, and I mean that with the most respect possible that I can give to an idiot. Packers Hall of Fame quarterback, Jay Cubs. Jay Cubs. Yeah. It's not as fun to say as equanimous. That is he a can... perfect example of a wrong opinion. Ring right. the bell. Ding, 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 ding. All right, welcome back, Packers fans. It is Cheesehead TV Live pregame show edition, week, week 17 edition. We're here at the Watershed in Tempe. I am Jason Perrone, along with Jeremy Vanderlinden, we of Cheesehead TV. Hello, sir. How goes it? It goes well. All right. So, <laughs> one last game for the Packers this season. They're not going to the playoffs, no matter what happens today. So, for starters, those of you who were excited to watch some records get broken today. Yep. It's not going to happen. Devontae Adams is inactive. He will not play today. I was wrong on the touchdown record, by the way. But I heard that on the radio. So well, I, thought, I thought he needed two touchdowns for oh, the touchdown oh, record. Touchdowns. Oh, he needed, uh, two, he needed one reception to catch Sterling Sharp at 112 from must, 1993 for a single-season catch mark. And then he got an outside chance of catching Jordy for the uh, yardage yeah. in a season mark um, set in 2014. Not going to happen. Adams not playing today. Jeremy, start us off with the inactives. Oh, geez. Okay. So we've got Devontae's out yeah, today. Yeah, Devontae's out. So that's a bummer. Tim Boyle, which, okay, I know that's an evergreen thing. That well, is a thing we know, right? In week 17, but in week 17, thought- he should be active. I don't understand. Uh, Equinemia St. Brown, another bummer. Jair Alexander, bummer number three. Uh, Jason Spriggs, Nico Saragusa, and Kendall Donerson. Kendall, Donner- Kendall Donerson just bl- baffles me, blows me away. If there was anybody that they should want to be looking at, it's that guy. But he's inactive again this week. I don't know. The Packers know better than we do. So it's going to be Aaron Rodgers out there to start the game. We don't know how long he's going to play for. Good with it or not, especially with Adams being out now. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't think Rogers should play. I don't think he should have played regardless of the record. I don't think that is what makes sense for the team. I don't, I don't think that's what makes sense for the future of the team. Uh, and now with Adams out, he definitely shouldn't play. I, I don't, I don't see that being beneficial for the Packers at all. Uh, we should, should see Deshaun Kaiser today. That is the way that should go. Yeah. Um, probably is not going to happen. Aaron Rodgers is adamant that he is going to play. So, again, for the second week in a row, Rodgers is pushing to play when he shouldn't. Well, Rodgers is starting, and I think you have to remember a couple of things. These guys are competitors. They want to be out there. Randall Cobb's going to play. But, you know, I think there's also the mentality of this is the last game of the season. Some of these guys realize that this might be their last game as a Packer. This might be their last game in the pros. This might be their last game at Lambeau Field. They want to be out there. Randall Cobb probably wants to do it one more time at Lambeau Field if he's not right. going to be back next year. Aaron Rodgers probably wants to give a big thank you to the fans at Lambeau Field for sticking through this season that's been a little bit tough. I know that those reasons don't necessarily um, compute with a lot of fans because they still see the risk like you were talking about. Right. Right. You, you guys could get okay. hurt non-contact, so there is there is a huge risk, and it's a big, big money did hear, risk, too. Did you hear about what happened to Tremont last week? In the pregame show, we said we didn't think Tremont should return punts, that it would be stupid to put a veteran back there who could get hurt. It doesn't make any sense. The guy's towards the end of his career. Don't put him back to return punts in a meaningless game. He gets hit, cuts his head open, bites a piece of his tongue off because the Packers put him back on punt returns. I think that's negligent. I don't think that's the right way to do things, and I don't understand. Great, they won last week, and it was fun to watch them win, but you don't put guys like that in that position. Tremont Williams deserves better. Bites a piece of his tongue off in a meaningless game? Stupid. That's just stupid. Well, football's also a, a violent sport, and I think that can happen to anybody at any time. I get that, but I'm not risking him on a punt return. And, when, and since you did, you know, he did get that injury on that punt return. You know, he got rocked. He cut his head open. He bit his t- piece of his tongue off. So I don't, I don't think they should have put him in that position. And, yeah, football is a risk, and you, you could get hurt at any time. But the Packers didn't need to put him in there for that. And I know they don't really have anybody else to return, but that's the thing. See what you do have. There are guys on the roster you haven't seen return this year. So give some other guys a shot and see what you got for next year. That should be the goal of this, these last two weeks. That should have been the goal. So um, this week I is, think will be different. Well, the reality is they don't have a guy right now. They still don't have a punt return. I know. I know. There's there's just some some 
roster things with this team that are, are befuddling, to say the least. So before we get into the offensive side of the ball and talk about that, coming into this game, obviously we talked about the, the risk to Aaron Rodgers. He is going to start. We don't know how long he's going to play. Yep. The head coaching search has started for the Green Bay Packers. Oh, yeah, so earlier right. this week, they, they interviewed Chuck Pagano. They interviewed Jim Caldwell. Pagano formerly of oh, both Cook Pagano and Caldwell, both formerly of the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, Jim Caldwell most recently with the Detroit Lions. Uh, I, these, I think, were due diligence interviews to start the process because there's going to be more guys they're going to want to talk to right. between now and when they make their decision. But were you surprised that they started already? No, I wasn't surprised. I, I was surprised those two got an interview. Uh, but, you know, hard pass for me. I, I don't want either of those. But I think it, it's a warm-up. Uh, they're, they're getting started on their, on their search, and they're kind of getting an idea of what they want to do. And so I kind of like the Packers' new approach of no stone unturned. They, do, they did it in free agency last year, and the offseason was a pretty good one. Um, and, and now in the coaching search, I'm expecting the same where they're going to interview a lot of guys. They're going to look at a lot of people. And so you are going to see some names that you're like, eh, why? And, and these are two of them. I don't, I don't think either of these guys will get the job or have a shot at the job. Do you think Joe Philbin has a shot to stick around? Some players are really uh, wanting that to happen. I think he has a shot in terms of that it's, it's more than 0% chance that he might get it. I think they'll interview him and he'll get a chance to – to make his case yeah. for staying and being the head coach, I don't think that's a good decision. All right, let's put a percentage on it. What is the percentage chance that Joe Philbin gets this job? Less than 10. Oh, okay. I agree. That's uh, that's a tough number for Less Joe. Less than 10%. But I agree. I, I, I think there's, there's enough good candidates out there. They don't have to settle for what they have. Joe Philbin was part of the issue. I mean, he was part of the staff that had the issues that they had. And even though things are great right now, I think the Packers are in need of more than just a vocal, vocal change uh, some scheme changes would probably be nice too. Some new, fresh ideas and, and, and stuff like that. So I think the players supporting him and, and lauding him in, in the media and to the media was almost just kind of a thank you to Philbin for making football fun again because yeah. we bottomed out in the Cardinals game. It, yeah. was, it was the most miserable that I can remember since 2005. And... The head coach for the Packers lost his job after that season. So yeah. we bottomed out again, and at least he salvaged and made football fun again. And, you know, he he still believes in these guys, and he's still coaching like he's going to be here, and he's putting his all into it and committing to these players. Why wouldn't they show some appreciation back? And I think that's more what that was than them actually wanting him to be the head coach. Maybe they do. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of emotion involved. And when you work with somebody and you built a relationship with somebody over many years, because remember, Philbin was here before. So Rogers has worked with him for a long time. Your emotions can take right. over a little bit. And sometimes you want that guy because you know what life will be like. You know, the offense, right? You know, uh, the point was made and it was a very good point. Yeah. Do you want to come into next season knowing exactly what you're doing already and just being able to fine tune it or do you want to come into next season knowing that you're going to probably have to learn an entirely new playbook, new terminology, a new system? That can be a little nerve wracking, even yeah. if it's the best route to go. Right. I, I think so. I think I think that might be the best route to go, and and I'm not expecting them to turn around next year and win the Super Bowl. I expect them to be competitive. I expect them to make the playoffs, uh, but I'm thinking it's it's a two year push to get a new staff in, uh, fill some of these holes to really get their get their push for uh, a Super Bowl run. I think we're looking at two years. Well, uh, just looking at the chat real quick. Al asks if we're making babies cry. No, Al, that's my son. He's here, and uh, he's upset because I'm talking, I think. Uh, I'm, yes, I'm making my own baby cry. That's what's happening. A uh, couple questions from the chat. Uh, J somebody suggested Jamon Moore. Jersey Al says, Jamon can't uh, – Catching easy passes. Do you really want him returning punts? And he fumbled. And he fumbled a kickoff. Like, uh, come on. I do, and here's why. I don't care if they muff every punt in the, in this game. Okay, until until they find the guy, just put anyone out there and see what happens. Don't put Tremont Williams out there. That's that's my thing. Not not that uh, you know I want to watch them lose or anything like that. But in a game that's meaningless, you have nothing to lose. You see what you got. You see. Uh, you, you see if any of the other guys on the roster can can um, create some kind of spark as a punt returner. And um, 
I mean, the Lions aren't very good, and they don't really they don't have any of their top receivers. Kenny Galladay's out today, so they're probably going to punt the ball a lot. So you get a lot of a lot of bites at that apple. See yeah. who see who on your sidelines can figure out how to make something happen as a punt returner. And it might suck. They might all drop the football. I don't. This football game doesn't mean anything. You're looking at next season. You're looking at what happened for next season, and that's all that matters. Right. Yeah. Looking ahead to the future and some of the guys that are going to be here next season and. You know, back to the Philbin thing, the one thing I could see happening is if they don't get the guy they want, they've got a short list of guys they want. If they yeah. don't get that person, they might defer to the safe, to next season and just keep Philbin in place for another year until they can get that guy. Um, and I don't – that's just a, a, a thought that I have. There's there, We could be surprised by this whole thing. It's the Packers. You never know what's going on. There has been a lot of – rumblings and a lot of different opinions about the Packers intention to interview Northwestern head coach Pat Fitzgerald right. who has ties to Mark Murphy there's a lot out there that are not very much in support of this because they think it's just because of that relationship he's getting a nod a chance to interview mm -hmm. uh, his offense has not necessarily been all that great Northwestern really hasn't done much in the Big Ten right uh, I don't know much about uh, Fitzgerald well, I, I, I think that's probably another media fabrication. Those things happen when, when there's lots of player or lots of things to talk about, like coaching candidates. Sometimes the media will talk about guys the Packers aren't even talking to. So that might not even be on the Packers' radar, Pat Fitzgerald. Pat Fitzgerald, but that is being talked about in the media. So fans are going to talk about it. We don't. We don't know. And uh, you know what? Fitzgerald might be a good fit. And the connection there is he's the last coach that Mark Murphy hired when he was when he was at Northwestern or or not Northwest. Was it at Northwestern? No, Anyways, when else. he was an AD, yeah. he hired Pat Fitzgerald to be the, the, the head football coach of his football team at his college, and that's the connection there. There's a connection, so blah, blah, blah. The media made that connection and said, hey, this might happen. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. I, th I just think there are too many other top candidates, and this is a premier job guys are going to want. They're not going to have to scrape the bottom of the barrel. I don't think they're going to have to settle on Joe if they don't want Joe. I don't think they're going to have to do that. They're going to get somebody else's candidate that they're looking forward to, and somebody else is going to have to make the safe choice. Uh, Josh McDaniels um, is reported, reportedly also going to get a shot or going to get a call. That could also be a media fabrication. That's something that uh, had been talked about a lot. Right, because we don't even know. kind of quieted down about it. It's back. Right. We don't even know if he's actually available because the thing that might have happened last offseason – is the New England Patriots might have said, hey, Bill's going to retire soon. We want you to be the next head coach. He might plan to stay in New England. He might not actually be available. Right. So I want Josh McDaniels. I think that would be great. I think that would be a great fit with Rodgers. But that doesn't necessarily mean that he's actually available. That's just the conversation we're having right now. But tomorrow is Black Monday. And very quickly after that happens, we will start to hear news, rumors about who they're actually interviewing, who they're actually looking at. So make sure you're following Ian Rappaport and Adam Schefter. Those two will keep you filled in. Yep. Um, but I don't, we don't actually know if Josh McDaniels is available. We don't know that. He made the choice that he made last offseason. To, to, he said he took the Colts job. He told them he'd take the job. And then he went back to New England and ditched the job uh, after they had hired a staff and brought people in and guys quit their jobs and they were ready to go to Indianapolis. And he went back to New England. That happened for a reason. I don't think you, you screw people over like that. For nothing. He had to have been offered something that made him want to stay in New England. There's a tie. I've said before, he's got the tractor beam with the, the Patriots, and you're always worried that if he come, comes over and then Belichick steps down, is he going to bolt for that job because it's, it's New England and he's got the ties there. So, yeah, a lot to keep an eye on. So, we got a game to talk about yeah, real quickly we do. here. Uh, <laughs> we should probably start talking about now we, with the players that are out, it's going to be interesting to see how this offense um, operates today. But let's start there. Offense. Rodgers does this better than anybody. End zone. Cobb. Touchdown. Unbelievable. Will we hear that for one last time? The uh, a, a, a touchdown well, to Randall Cobb. I don't know if it'll be Field. I don't know if it'll be a hail mary, but because uh, that's what that was. That was a, yes. that was the hail mary in uh, the playoffs against the Giants. Just two years ago, the last time that the Packers were in the playoffs, by the time they go to the playoffs again next year, it will have been almost a thousand days Ugh. since their last appearance. Ugh. 
NFC it's Champions. a long time. NFC Championship game in Atlanta. Ooh. So offensively today, I would have to assume that there's no reason why Aaron Rodgers needs to chuck it 50 times, so he probably will. Um, Jamal Williams is your starting running back. He had his best game as a Packer last week. Uh, played extremely well. Pass blocking, catching out of the backfield, running the ball, running yep. hard. He's got a great demeanor. I think I think he definitely should get the rock a lot today. Yeah. Early and often. I don't know if they're going to try to work any of the young running backs in there to just see if they've got anything towards for the you know for special teams or bottom of the depth chart next season. But all five of your starting offensive linemen are going to be out there today, and that's another reason why Rodgers is playing. But right. agree, run the ball. Run the ball. Well, I mean, so you're without Adams, and you're out. You're you're out on Equinemia St. Brown. Two of your top guys are out today. They're going to have to run the ball. But one thing I do re- really want to see, we've been asking for it for a few weeks now, more Robert Tanyan in the passing game. I want to see what Tanyan can do. Uh, today might be a good shot at that. You're, when you're down some receivers, they're probably going to lean on the tight ends. Jimmy Graham has been a disappointment this season. So let's see what they have. Uh, you know, the, the most consistent tight end on the roster has been Lance Kendricks this season. You know, Kendricks has come on the last couple of weeks, and he's looked okay. If he would have played like that for the last two years solid, yeah. I think we would all be down with Lance Kendricks. He oh, just yeah. wasn't that guy for such a long time. Totally. I'm going to make a call because, you know, I love to make predictions out of nowhere. Yep, I'll, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. The, I'm ready for you to be right. The one two weeks ago wasn't as much fun because it happened. I'm going to call it right now. Randall Cobb is going to throw and complete a pass today. Wow. I would love to see that. Randall Cobb is going to throw and complete a pass today. That'd be all right with me. Huge, huge uh, finale. Because we, we, we assume that Cobb won't be back next season. Okay, I yeah. hope he is. Yeah. But if he's not, that'd be a huge finale and send off. He's going he's gonna to throw. I didn't say it would be a touchdown. I just said it'd be a pass. Not a popular opinion. And, and we're probably going to get um, lambasted in the chat a little. But I want Cobb back and I want Matthews back. And I think you want Matthews back as well. But my feelings on Matthews is, you know, he should he needs to take a big pay cut. He shouldn't be, um, he he shouldn't be your your plans for the future. But uh, next year, if you get rid of Matthews, what do you have at outside linebacker other than Kyler Fackrell? <laughs> like, you need to have something in the in between while you bring in some rookies and you get some guys uh, in and start preparing them uh, to be your future. You can't just ditch Matthews and start over completely. That won't, I don't think that's what would be best for the team. I don't think Clay's going to take a pay cut. I think he'll get more. He's not going to get extravagant money. He's not going to get what he's being paid right now. Yeah. But he'll get more than the Packers are probably willing to offer, and I think he's probably going to go and take that because you only have a limited amount of time in your life to make that kind of money. Um, he is, zero, is a zero cap hit, too, yep. um, if the Packers let him go. Nick Perry – still costs the Packers money. He's going to cost them dead cap space. He's going to create a little bit of cap space, but he's going to cost in dead cap space as well. I think... You got to move on. I No, I think the Packers no. will bring him back. I don't want it. Do not want... I, I know you don't want it. I'm just return saying... Return to sender. Do I know not you, want... I, I know you don't want it, but it's a, uh, no, it, it is. It. The NFL's a business, and it's okay. a business decision. So, so. I kind of I kind of crushed our offense talk here because we jumped to Clay Matthews. But so back to, That's back okay. to the offense. That's okay. It's week 17, You're and... Right. and you know, the Packers should run the ball, and Aaron Rodgers is going to throw it. Right. Right. Moving and, on. End of story. Moving on. We're okay. moving on. We're on to Cincinnati. We're on to Cincinnati. Right. Oh, boy. No, uh, we're not. Yeah, so this, this offense today, I'm not expecting. Well, I don't know what to expect. The Lions have some injuries on their defense, but the Packers with their injuries on offense, I, we don't know what to expect because Rodgers could play the entire game. If he really, you know, he really seems driven to do that. I'm hopeful that we see Deshaun Kaiser. I think that's what's going to happen. And if Deshaun Kaiser comes out, well, it's a crapshoot. I have no idea what's going on. Well, do you remember happen. what happened in Week 17 of 2005? The Packers beat a good Seattle Seahawks team at Lambeau Field. Yeah. Brett Favre wanted to play well and go out on a high note. Brett Favre. Aaron Rodgers yep. is not the same quarterback, but he's got a little bit of that competitive spirit in him. Rodgers is going to be looking to have a big day today. He wants to go into next season saying, hey, look what we did the last two weeks. Let's build off of that. Yep. So, I'm uh, with you. all right. Special teams. Special teams. Do we have a do we, do have, we, a, ha- do we have a song or a do we have special teams? Do That's we, true, yeah. Uh, do we even have that? I don't know. Special teams. This to send the Packers into the NFC Championship game. It is good. The Packers are moving on. 
And Mason Crosby, a hero for Green Bay. Okay. It's real simple. Don't give up the ball. Mason Crosby, make all of your kicks. Yeah. J.K. Scott, show us you can punt in the cold. But we need to probably devote the majority of this conversation to the future of the Packers special teams because with any, any, any stroke of luck or help from the Lord above, they will have a new coordinator next year and they need – they need to make that happen. That needs to be the first the first person out the door at 1265 tomorrow. Ron should be Zook. Ron Zook. He should be out the door today. The game's over. All right, Zook. We packed your stuff for you. And then we threw it in the dumpster and set it on fire. See you later. Yeah, Ron Zook, I, I can't believe he's even. I don't, Nobody understands why he's around. Like, I can't believe he didn't get fired when Mike did or before Mike did. Ron Zook has been abysmal as a special teams quarterback, uh, coordinator. And it's not, you know, it's not like he's had the guys to get it done. At, at times, they've, mm-hmm. they've really had to scramble for returners. Mason Crosby, like, Zook can't help that he missed five field goals against the Lions this season. That, that, that's not on Zook. But there are lots of things that happen on special teams. Uh, blocks in the back constantly. Just all the time. That's all over the NFL, though. That's yeah. I mean, anytime there's a big return, the, the refs feel like they have to throw a flag or they're mm. going to, you know, they didn't do Is it the job. NFL's plan? Let's just get rid of big returns. That'll keep them safe, right? Uh, I don't I don't know. I, I just think Zook is not. There are things that, that happen with this special teams unit that are clearly on Zook, and he is not an NFL coach in any form to me. Uh, he failed in college. He wasn't a good college coach either. I mean, obviously he's good at something, right? He's a professional coach. He got here somehow, but Ron Zook doesn't belong in Green Bay anymore. And that should have ended a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the Packers have uh, struggled in this area for a long time. Their previous coordinator, Sean Slocum, got fired after the NFC debac- championship debacle in Seattle. Ron Zook's had a complete debacle this season. He yep. Made, Crosby went through a dip. J.K. Scott's been inconsistent. They've had penalties all over the place. They're not making smart decisions. Ball carriers – you know, returners can't feel the punt. Tremont Williams, a seasoned veteran, can't feel the simple punt in Minnesota. It was one of the reasons why the tide turns in that game. Just gaff after gaff after gaff. And it's just the oldest story with this team, and it's so frustrating yeah. because this is field position. It's field position, and this is how you set your defense up to be at an advantage in keeping the offense of uh, the other team pinned back and trying to get the ball. I mean, the Packers' field position has not been great. For a long time. And that's one of the problems is, you know, I see them backed up towards their own end zone way, way, way too often. Yeah. Because they just can't get a push. They have nobody returning the ball that scares anybody. There's a lot of work that needs to be done on special teams. And everyone just needs to keep this in mind. When we get ready for the draft and we go through the draft process, yes, we need starters on offense and defense. Yeah. But the Packers are going to need to pick some guys with special teams in mind in this draft as well, where Mm -hmm. they're athletic, fast, gunners. Guys that want to get in there and play. Guys that live to try to block every kick. You need some of that gusto and some of that attitude. Right. And I think on special teams, you know, the Packers have had some good special teams in their their history. Right. And that's a big deal. That's a big part of the equation when you have that. You know, I think there was a year that Janice, I think it was only – I think it was 2014. Wasn't that the year that Janice was, like, one of the best gunners in the league? Oh, yeah. Wrecking everybody. And And you know what? Actually – Trevor Davis this season when he came back was actually, I mean, he's no Jeff Janis, but he did look pretty good as a gunner on special teams. He was very active and as a returner. So we talk about things that they need, and we talk about the fact that they need a punt returner. Is Trevor Davis potentially that guy? Because the first two seasons for him were so disappointing. I, I, and, and I'm not sure what his value is as a receiver, but what he showed on special teams at least has me intrigued. Bring him into camp and let him give him a look. Right. You got to give him drafted, another shot at it. He got drafted in uh, – he was 2016. So uh, next year would, te- would be the last year of his rookie deal. And then, you know, he's on a cheap deal. Yeah. So if you get, you know, any marked results from him, it's a huge value. So I think that you, you definitely bring him into camp. Yeah. But as far as today goes, like, let's just not have any kicks blocked or, or anything dumb happen right you know Crosby make your field goals on the Lions side of things just want to remind everybody okay Matt Prater my favorite 
drunk ass in the entire NFL. And every time he lines up to kick today, he's drunk. Just he's drunk. That. Matt Prater, you drunk ass is what I always <laughs> tweet out there. So, um, all right, moving on to defense, defense before we wrap up and get out of here. Special teams. This to send the Packers into the NFC Championship game. It is good. The Packers are moving on. And Mason Crosby, a hero for Green Bay. Okay, so now we can talk about defense. Well, we already talked about Clay Matthews. Kyler Fackrell's fallen off a little bit. The past, uh, Reggie Gilbert has been very average at best. Nick Perry's on injured reserve. The pass rush is a is a big concern. Now, obviously, the pregame show, we're doing this on Sunday. Right. There was a bowl game yesterday between the Michigan Wolverines and the Florida Gators, and Ja'Kai Polite of the Gators was on display. It's a guy that a lot of Packers fans are starting to become very enamored with because this is what happens every year. The, most, the position of most need – and then the player most highly rated in college at that position is the one that the Packers should target, draft, move up in the draft, do what you need to do, trade the farm, yeah. get this guy. Um, the Packers are only dropping more and more spots when they win these games. And as other teams lose that are behind them, the Lions, even if the Lions won today, they still would pick before the Packers. So that's the – do you think the Lions have any motivation to win today? You're, you're, you're mistaken. Right. So uh, there's nothing to be gained at all. The Packers, you know, they don't want to lose at home. Well, you know, and may, maybe the one thing that they want, uh, the, the one thing that the Lions are looking for is to right the ship with Matthew Stafford because he has had a rough season. And when they traded Golden Tate away, I mean, that didn't help him. But Matthew Stafford's been rough. Uh, they had a, a radio host on the big show on 1250 in Milwaukee. They had a radio host from uh, Michigan on. I heard he that. said, uh, yeah, I heard it. Fans in Detroit are turning on him and they want him out of town. And he never thought that would happen. Well, this is his 10th year in the league. And I, I, I think the Lions could definitely do worse. But after 10 years, um, the, the franchise has just had a hard time with continuity and, and keeping themselves consistent. They've actually made the playoffs twice. Yeah since Stafford's been there um I I think they won they went did they win a playoff game I think they won one playoff game they got robbed against the Cowboys in 2014 yeah and that's why the Cowboys ended up coming to Green Bay and Des dropped the ball so it's it's been tough in Detroit I don't blame all that on on Matthew Stafford at this point though is it Stafford's fault or is it the Lions fault you know who he is you know what kind of quarterback he is you know he's a stand-up guy as right. much as it pains me to, to give credit to a division rival because I just, you know, I was was raised to not love the Bears, Vikings, and Lions. He's a stand-up guy. I, I do think you could do worse, you know, but maybe it is time for Yeah, but for, he's a guy, look, I, something is going on in Detroit. It must be in the water. They can't win. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter who they have. They can't figure out how to win. Well, I, I have another question for you, Jeremy. Um, okay. So it's 1148 Central. At Lambeau Field right now. So this game kicks off in 12 minutes. Is Matt Patricia and the Lions, are they going to be there on time? On time? Are they be on time? Yeah. What is the deal? Matt Patricia reportedly is late for his own meetings and has been most of this season. Doesn't he just kind of look like the kind of guy that kind of rolls in you know, right out of bed, sweatpants, still wiping the sleep out of his face? Right. and He wakes up, he's knocks a, weird, a couple beer cans off his, his he's kind of nightstand weird. as he picks up his phone. and Yeah. He's got bloodshot eyes, and he's just like, I guess I, I guess I have a meeting. Yeah. I got to go. He's a weird guy. He's definitely <laughs> a weird guy. The, he may want a new quarterback next year, and they might try to trade Matthew Stafford. Yeah. And they might try to trade Stafford to a team that needs a quarterback. You know, I heard Jacksonville could be a destination. Hey, that the would Giants, look – I think that would be all right. The Giants, if they finally want to move on from Eli, although the Giants need to draft their future quarterback is what they need. Agreed. To uh, just, a, you know, a bunch of different things that could happen. Uh, you know, something interesting to watch. So this could be one of the last times – that, or it could be the last game that we see Matthew Stafford play in a Lions uniform. He's playing against the Packers at Lambeau Field. Lucky him where the Lions have had such a great history of success over the last 30 years. So it's uh, it's going to be a tough one. They did win here last year. That was Brett Hundley. Aaron Rodgers did not play in that game. It that doesn't insane. count. No. We'll just delete that. No, but it, but in 2015, they finally got off the schneid and won yep. a game at Lambeau Field. Mason Crosby tr attempted probably one of the worst field goals I've ever seen anybody kick in their life. Yeah. And he's had some really bad ones in his career. So that's that's another storyline to keep an eye on. 
the Lions just they don't have any players in this game. Right. Who's, they who's don't. He throwing the ball to? I didn't know Galladay was Galladay out. Is out. The and only they don't have weapon Tatum that they right. had because gone. All gone. Golden Tate's gone. Marvin Jones Jr.'s on injured reserve. Uh carry on Johnson was put on injured reserves. They don't have a running back. I mean, literally they might be borrowing players from Green Bay. Right. Just hey, can you guys come over and play? You guys send some like of your guys. The old little league. The can old we use league your league. practice squad for today? I expect. I expect the defense to show up big. And uh, you know, you know who I want to see have a big day today is Josh Jackson. I want Josh Jackson to get some yeah. momentum, build momentum towards next season, and and you know, maybe pick off a ball or do something exciting. You know, the, give the home crowd something to cheer well, for. That's really what this week is about. I've been saying about. it for a few weeks. I, I want to see him play some safety. Well, just a couple snaps. I'm everybody. Not, not the whole game. I just want to Everybody, see a few that, snaps. That's what everybody says. Is there, Are we connected to the chat? Uh, you know what? We have had some internet issues. Okay. The stream is still going. Right. People are still watching. Right. But Sorry if talking. you can't get on the chat or there's any internet issues. To wrap up, the Packers are trotting Aaron Rodgers out there and these players out there because they really do care. about. They care about the fans. They want to give them a thank you and yeah. you know, end the season on a good note. We may not play the full game, but that's that's one of the reasons why. It is a little bit ridiculous because you're putting Rodgers at risk. Not the smartest thing in the world to do. Yep. I think they'll be smart. Try to be smart about it, although you can never guarantee every step of the way that somebody doesn't twist an ankle or a non-contact injury happens. But this is how the Packers are going out. So fortunately for Packers fans here, especially the ones here that are filling up the watershed in Tempe, it's an Aaron Rodgers Sunday, and we can all be very thankful for that, at least for a little bit. So any final thoughts before we sign off? Just to recap what we're going to see today, Packers offense, I don't know. Packers defense, I don't know. We don't know. We don't know anything. But we will make a prediction. I do think the Packers are going to win today yeah. because the Lions got nothing. Yeah. They have nothing on offense. Packers win today. Uh, so the Packers are going to win today. I'm going to give them the win. 21-6. The Lions will struggle to even get into the end I, zone today. I think the Packers get into the third. I think they score into the 30s. 30s. Now, I don't think Detroit. It depends on if Deshaun Kaiser comes in. I don't think Detroit gets more than 10 points. So it's going to be a fun game, uh, fun game to watch. Uh, now watch. It'll end up being a close game. It'll, it'll end in overtime. Uh, we can't go to overtime. We got a big, big things going on here at the Watershed in Tempe. Hey, Packers fans here at the Watershed in Tempe, it's our last game of the season. Want to thank you all so much for being here all year long. It's been a blast. We're doing the bike giveaway all right, today. We're doing the bike giveaway today. So yeah. come up and get your tickets one last time. They don't care about time. us. They care about the, the bike. bike. But the bike. Come up and get your tickets one <laughs> last time. Yep. Packers, Packers going to get a big win today. Everyone enjoy the game. For Jeremy Vanderlyn and Jason Perone of Cheesehead TV, this has been Cheesehead TV Live. Thank you for listening to Cheesehead TV Live. Check out CheeseheadTV.com for more great Packers content.